So, welcome to Fight 2 of Surgery 2014 basis, and we are going to be dividing this into about four parts or so because it's made up of one and nine questions. So, we have the first question we have a 60 year old man, you can see the uh, complaint in the right eye, photophobia, lacrimation, reduced vision, and so on. But if we go further to look for like something that could be more specific to lead us to the answer in this case, we are told that the intraocular pressure is 38. 38. Some text will tell you that normal intraocular pressure is 16 to 22, some 12 to 22, uh, and so on. So the eyes calm, LD, intraocular pressure. So we have here on the initial complaint of intraocular pressure of 38. So what's the most probable diagnosis? So looking through everything, there's one particular condition here that we are very, very familiar with that results in elevated intraocular pressure, and that is a glaucoma attack, acute glaucoma attack. So there's no other misleading sign there. All right, we have a 54-year-old female patient who has been admitted to the hospital 12 days after the beginning of acute pancreatitis. You will notice very painful infiltration uh, in the region of the pancreas. You can see the pulse. It's, the patient is having tachycardia and white blood cell. Abdominal cavity contains uh, fluid. So this is no longer a patient that you want to be treating with um, just conservative treatment like use of contica and so on. This is a patient that is in need of surgery. This is a patient that is in need of surgery. So you can see the patient is in very grave condition and then abdominal cavity contains fluid before the patient develops peritonitis and more severe complications. So, what is the current status of this patient? Is surgical treatment. See, whenever they tell that a patient is having carbon coal, we, we've said before that carbon coal is so much as in a patient having um, diabetes. But whenever a patient is having uh, carbon coal, one of the actually in the face, in the face, one of the very severe complication in that case is the development of a cavernous sinus thrombosis. Please, let's take note of that. Cavernous sinus or thrombosis. Anytime you see carbon cup the face, that's the first complication that should come to mind. All right. We know that many times in the preservation of blood, we have the use of citrate medium. So here we have a patient is being transfused one mil of uh, blood, even though comparatively tests have been done. The blood was conserved by sodium nitrate. They don't tell us this for funny crook questions, especially. So at the end of immunotransfusion, we could see different transfusion reactions and everything, but they didn't tell us anything about the blood pressure. There are no probably other signs that patient is in shock, tachycardia, but we cannot, we shouldn't prove it by this alone. So what complications should be suspected? The answer here is citrate intoxication. You may be finding citrate shock and citrate intoxication. The same question always, al almost always, always go for citrate intoxication. So this is the signs of uh, citrate intoxication. Okay, 20 year old patient, fairly 12 hours ago, pain in epigastric area, nausea, spotty vomiting. They are taking a call before. You know that the pain of uh, appendicitis is usually initially diffused around the epigastric region, then later it becomes more localized. So, in a few hours, the pain localized in the right iliac area. Positive rebound tenderness symptoms. This is just classic for a patient that has uh, acute appendicitis. Acute appendicitis. Uh, it is when our colleague will not be giving us that history, especially maybe alcohol and then initial epigastric pain and so on. And cholecystitis will be in the right apocondria, not right iliac area. So we have a patient with first bites. We have a patient with first bite, and they are asking us that what degree, what what degree of first bite is observed in this patient? How can we know the degree of first bite in this patient? The only thing in this patient is that uh, feet was pale, and then our vomit became red, and so on, together with pain. Now, in first degree of first bite, there are no blisters. These are some of the signs we find in first degree, but without blisters. And notice in this question, no blisters. In second degree, you will have blisters uh, one to two days, especially one to two days after the point of uh, the limb being frozen. And in third to fourth uh, degree, you will have like a purple color kind of uh, blisters and it may also be gangrenous. 
and patients that are in third to fourth degree first bite might need amputation. So when they, they are telling us there are no blisters, this automatically qualifies the question to have the answer as first degree. All right. You see, reading through this question, they want to simply know what our, our preliminary diagnosis is based on See, I'm reading everything, there is one particular thing that is uh, important here. They said the, the major to counter, you know, this is the major to counter of the femur, is located high above the Rosen-Lelautin line. The Rosen-Lelautin line is a theoretical line from the anterior superior iliac spine to the ischial tuberosity. Now, if the major to counter is going to be elevated above that point, Definitely something is wrong with the continuity between the ilium and the other bones of the pelvis. So that's that's one major way to just logically figure it out. So and that will happen in iliac dislocation of the hip. Iliac dislocation of the hip. This line is the anterior superior iliac spine line to the ischial tuberosity. It's a theoretical line. All right, we've spoken about uh, tonsillitis uh, before, but we have a little variation in the options here. Now, I will just mention something very important in this case. They are telling us that three weeks after acute angina, the patient is still weak, in and subfibrile, is which will mat uh, maxillary lymph nodes are enlarged, tonsils are flabby, uh, they said tonsils, not, not just one on the right or left, the tonsils are flabby, uh, uh, stick together with arches, they are prevalent plugs in lacunae. Now, when they say they stick together, Right now you are thinking that maybe there, there will be obstruction. Yes, possibly, since the tonsils are sticking together as out of this uh, uh, prevalent kind of inflammation. So that leaves us, what is the most probable diagnosis? When you are looking at three weeks, you might be thinking that it is not enough to say that it is a chronic tonsillitis. But the fact is, in this patient, it's chronic tonsillitis. And one of the ways of putting the diagnosis of chronic tonsillitis is in a patient that have had a uh, case of tonsillitis, recurrent tonsillitis for about maybe seven different times in the previous year or a patient with acute tonsillitis with obstruction and this is like acute tonsillitis even though obstruction is not directly written but we can see that they stick together with arches so this qualifies this, this takes this question away from the concept of acute tonsillitis to chronic tonsillitis so just and you may be seeing these questions in different booklets as well. The three weeks after the patient has not recovered, they are giving us all this, this chronic tonsillitis. All right, we've spoken about uh, thrombofibrillitis, especially of the superficial uh, veins. We have a three year old patient here, right sided deep vein thrombosis of iliofemoral segment three years ago. They said three years ago. So now he's suffering from when they are giving us history of uh, uh, a patient with thrombofibrillitis, and now they want to know our preliminary diagnosis. Most of the time, if post thrombophlebitic syndrome is the option, it will always almost be correct. So, objectively, moderate edema of shin, brand induration of skin in lower third of shin, various dilatation of superficial veins are present. You know, it's not all this other, these are not acute conditions. This is a patient with post thrombophlebic syndrome, and together with these signs, it is the very cause form of it. All right. In the aspect of internal medicine, I try to explain some of these things very well here, yeah, but I will just point our attention to something in the question. Here we have a shy that is having acute staphylococcal destruction of the right lung. Now, unexpectedly, develop acute pain on the right dyspnea cyanosis. The right side of chest lags behind in the respiratory act. Percussion reveals uh, dullness. We said already that we used to have dullness when there is consolidation, like in pneumonia and, and, and so on. In cancer, we can have dullness. In the lower parts of the right, band box resonance in the upper part. You see, it, the, the, the normal sound of the lung is supposed to be resonance. When you're having band buzz, that is like upper resonance. And in the same side of the lung, you're also having dullness. That means that you have two different processes causing two different um, disorder and dialogue. At any time you see that in a question, and you are privileged to have your option, having pneumothorax and pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is going to give us the band box resonance, while the 
pulse, the power pneumothorax is going to give us the dullness. So this is a patient with right-sided power pneumothorax. So in power pneumothorax, you always have two different pathological lung sounds. So that we and they say borders of early cardiac dullness are shifted to the left. Anyway, that can happen in spontaneous pneumothorax, but you won't be having dullness. Right lung abscess together with other history, they are really telling us it's this we will not be having a uh, band box section as here and uh, so on. All right, this patient, I know that we have like a question before in which answer was obturating and diatrosis. But notice this is 98 year old patient. Take note of the age, and you will be finding this question in the symptom, in the you'll be finding this symptom rather in the question whenever they want to point our attention to atherosclerosis obliterance. So the patient is having furrow symptom on the left. Pulse on foot arteries and public artery is impalpated. And if you check out atherosclerosis obliterance, it's called that the, it's, could be, uh, it's uh, arterial occlusion, which could be at the level of even the aorta or in other small and medium-sized uh, vessels. And that would result in diminution of absence pulse in the popliteal arteries and other arteries of the lower extremities. So the correct answer here with this furrow symptom is atherosclerosis uh, obliterans. Patients obliterating and arthritis, even though in crop, they may, not, they may not be giving us that, those histories. You can have it in patients that have um, syphilis. It's also a small, medium size uh, occlusion. You can have a patient with syphilis, in patient with um, tuberculosis, and so on. This is not venous disease, I'm sure we are familiar with that now. And then Burgers disease, this occur majorly in patients that is, uh, takes tobacco. tobacco. Alright, this is forensic medicine. Examination of a dead man who had died by hanging revealed that cadaver spots disappeared when pressed upon and restored after 50 seconds. Vigor motives was moderately expressed only in the masticatory muscles. But all these things, you can take note of that, but the, the most important thing is the body temperature was uh, 31 degrees. Now, after uh, a patient is dead, after someone is dead, the body temperature begins to decrease 1 degree centigrade every hour, every one hour. So, uh, if we take the normal temperature to be about 36 to 37 averagely, then this patient must have long gone between six to seven hours ago. If you do the uh, subtraction, that's seven minus that one, give us six. So this is about six to seven hours. So specify the time of death, six to seven hours. There is a critical thinking question of a patient who, of a man who had committed, of a dead man, or a man rather, who had committed suicide. And he was found in a room alone. The windows were open, the doors were open, there was no object in the room and they were asking how was he able to hang himself the only thing that was found in the room was just water around the area where the man had hung himself to the ceiling so how did the man hang himself i will say the answer before the end of the question examination of because this question was actually repeated repeated six to seven hours all right, you see, contusion of the eye can cause different things, especially two things, majorly among all these things. Of course, we could have tomatic character, but that's not the case here with just medication. In patients that have contusion of the eye, we might be thinking of retinal detachment, and we might be thinking of hemophthalmia, like bleeding into the eye. So here we have condition of the right eye. Patient complains of sudden loss of vision with remaining light perception. Eye is not irritated. The cornea is transparent, pupil reacts to light, and pupil area is black. The fundal reflex is uh, absent. What is the most likely cause of this uh, vision loss? With this uh, leading, uh, with this leading signs in the patient, so the correct answer is uh, hemophthalmia, hemophthalmia, hemophthalmia. I think there will be affection to light reaction if it is retinal detachment. A 65 year old patient complains of pain in lumbar spine. If you read to, he has been suffering from this potential for about half a year. Prostrate volume is this. The rate of prostrate specific antigen, PSA, is 60. You know, 
often time and they said the positive biopsy reveal adenocarcinoma of the prostate now when it is posted benign prostatic apoplasia or prostatic apoplasia simply they will tell us all the old information and then they will tell us that the PSA the prostate prostatic antigen they may give us that is about five in crop and the norm is about two to four so or two to five so that will let you know that this is not cancer this is not cancer but here we are having it to be cystic this is so elevated what supplemental examination method we allow to determine the stage of neoplastic uh, process in this so we are going to the pelvis we are going to the pelvis to check and that is uh, CT tomography of the pelvis all right extra picture of the chest shows a density and an abrupt decrease in the upper lobe please take note of the lobe upper lobe of the right lung Middle and lower lobe of the right lung has its significant pneumatization. Right pulmonary lung cause of dense lobe and so on. There are clear outlines of two uh, annular shadows. What disease is the X ray pattern uh, typical for? And notice that in the upper and middle part of left pulmonary feet, there are multiple focal shadows. Multiple focal shadows. And the right pulmonary lung has also come from a dense lobe. Now, we are thinking, since the focus is on the upper lobe, we are thinking of different processes that could occur in the upper lobe. Here, they say atelectasis of the right upper lobe. We are not going to be talking about multiple focal shadows, so that excludes that. In peripheral cancer, no, that excludes that. So, we are thinking of pancos tumor or fibrocarbinous pulmonary uh, tuberculosis. And in this case, we could see multiple... Uh, focal shadows and tuberculosis loves the upper part of the lungs because the macrobacterium tuberculin needs uh, air. So this is a patient with uh, fibrocarbinous pulmonary uh, tuberculosis, fibrocarbinous pulmonary tuberculosis. A patient complains, they are not telling us the age, so a patient just complains of impaired valve vision. Previously his eyes often turn red and hot. Objective the eyes are not irritated, cornea is transparent, arterial chambers are medium deep, they are located transparent. Iris of eyes have not changed color patterns and the pupils of regular shape scalloped. Scalloped pupil. Bad microscopy of the crystalline lens reveals the opacity and vacuoles. This is the major thing in this question. So they are asking us to make a diagnosis. So this is a patient that is having a uh, cataract and then the cataract becoming complicated that's why we are having vacuoles and such opacity in the in the lens when the cataract affects the lens but the patient is not diabetic so we can't go for this we are not told the age and then no other thing is pointing to the fact that it was radiation or, te or a tetanic form of cataract in this patient so this is a patient that is having cataract and these are signs of complicated cataracts opacity and vacuoles Okay, you be you could figure out this by looking at your palms. Pain arose at the site of cones on palmar surface at the base of second and third fingers, and then some time later, the dosum of hand became edematic, and first and third fingers are half bent in the interphalangeal chains. You see, if you look at your first finger, which is the thumb and the third finger, in between those three, you are going to have your second interdigital space especially in between the in between actually in between the second and third fingers in between second and third finger is going to be the second interdigital space so that is just a clue anyway in this question that it is phlegmon of second interdigital space don't be deceived by the con con access of right and don't be deceived this is more specific phlegmon and you know that phlegmon is going to usually occur along uh, sheets and to be localized between its own sheets Alright, a patient that is having bum and now is having continued fever. One thing that is happening in this patient is septicotoxemia. And one of the most common causes of infectious complication in patients with bone is pseudomonas aeruginosa. So this is a patient uh, with septicotoxemia. These are signs of septicotoxemia in a bone patient. Alright, you have positive Schottkin-Blomberg symptom. It's usually positive in uh, peritonitis and so on. 
and you must make your diagnosis surgically within two hours. It's urgent. The patient needs urgent surgery, so that name must be within two hours. A surgeon examined a 40 year old patient and diagnosed him with right forearm furunco at the prolonecrotic stage. The furunco was lanced, and, and the furunco is at the hydration stage. You know what wound dressing will you give patient if the furunco is at the stage of hydration where it's containing fluid and some other things? If your dressing is hypertonic, you know that the fluid is going to move from the region of hypotonicity to hypertonicity, and so that will help in draining the furunco. So the correct answer here is this hypertonic solution. 30 year old patient uh, is going to be in need of uh, pressure and then the axons, what should we transfuse? But we have to look at the other conditions of the patient that they have petechial hemorrhages. And what's the cause of all these hemorrhages is due to the fact that the patient is having Wehoff's disease. Wehoff's disease is immune thrombocytopenic opera. And you can see the blood counts, though the blood is low, hemoglobin is low. And but the thrombocytes 30. And you know that norm is 180 to 320. Even as at this level, you might still not uh, transfuse thrombocytic mass. But since the patient is bleeding and the patient is in need of surgery, what the patient need in the first place? In the first place? In the first place? Sorry, in the first place is a thrombocytic mass. Thrombocytic mass. The patient is having close to abdominal surgery. It's multiple ruptures of the spleen. The patient needs urgent surgery. In order to determine the blood group and rexus compatibility for the sake of our transfusion, there is any doc a doctor of any specialty can do that. That's not when you should be looking for a surgeon or something. Like any doctor should be able to do that in such an emergency condition. 30 year old man, road accidents, respiratory insufficiency is progressing, there are cardiac abnormalities, clinical and extra investigation review, mediastinal. Uh, displacement. One major condition that could easily and rapidly cause this in a patient with trauma is if the patient is having pneumothorax. But more specifically, valvular pneumothorax is very, very uh, dangerous. So this, this is first, the first thing we should always think of as complication. They have not telling us that there's metastatic displacement in a patient with trauma and so on is valvular pneumothorax. Air is entering into the uh, thorax and then the thorax itself due to the area of damage is forming like a valve. So L is entering, it's trapped. Another air enters, it's trapped. Another air enters, it's trapped. So it's going to be shifting the media standard. That's valvular form of pneumothorax. This patient was brought to the neurosurgery department and with cerebral condition is suspected. So this is not this is not something that has to do with maybe versus this is about cerebral condition. You want to see and one major thing that can show us the the cerebrum here is the CT or the MRI and so good there is no MRI in the option. So the correct answer is C T of cerebral. Alright, thirty five year old female patient with signs of a serrative gastric hemorrhage. So deceitfully, the patient, as I said, the patient began to recover, and all of a sudden, the hemoglobin began to fall again. It's a patient that is bleeding, seriously. Decreased to 93, then to 58. What's the tactics of treatment you want to do? An urgent surgery. Urgent surgery. Bleeding. All right, we've differentiated different kind of these thyroid conditions previously. The 39-year-old woman complains of tumor on the anterior surface of the neck. It's been observed for about two years. Non-mobile uh, and has enlarged recently. Change of tone of voice. But let's go to the objective examination. In the left lobe of the thyroid gland, a 3cm node is palpated. Very dense, tuberous and painless. And to crown it up, cervical lymph nodes are enlarged. You are already thinking of a cancerous process, a cancerous process. Functional status of thyroid gland is unchanged. Yes, that was the abdominal thyroid gland cancer. So this is a patient with uh, thyroid gland uh, cancer. A nodular a thyroid goiter in which thyroid gland also function uh, 
is also unchanged because it's yield thyroid like true thyroid same amount of secretion so they will not be telling us that the cervical lymph nodes are enlarged another sign that could bring us to cancer these are unconscious patient that fell in love with uh, electricity <laughs> and therefore it's passed through uh, the body so there are fields of necrosis of the skin on the right hand and on the right uh, foot so this is a patient with electro bomb so that's how it is it is a bomb in this patient and it's due to uh, uh, electricity this high voltage this voltage what is the preliminary diagnosis this voltage you charge your phone but somebody has decided to charge the body with it so this is uh, electro bomb of right foot and right hand The focus there is the extremities. Please let's take notes. Yes, anytime they are giving us history of a patient with uh, a pain in the chest and so on, and then they are telling us on objective examination that we have drumstick in the distal phalanges. So we can have this in patient with bronchiectasis and so on. And after several years, after a long time, they want us to do when they are talking about drumstick, if it's have bronchography in the option you should uh, choose it as the right answer but in more modern application where it's actually CT that will be done and or and bronchoscopy actually but as far as this clock is concerned and these conditions and when you see drumstick you go for bronchography all right so we're going to stop here and the answer to the critical thinking question i asked was that the only way that man could have committed suicide without anything in the room <coughs> And the fact that we found water in the room is that that water originally was ice. So he stood on the ice, hung himself, and after some time, the ice melted and just became ordinary water on the floor. So if you thought of that, that's very, very nice. What is this uh, result indicative of? Of what? Blood typing in positive isomaglutinin reaction with standard serum of A and B that is the serum of A and B groups were known and we have negative reaction in um, blood group 0 and A, B, fourth group now those statements of this you can never have a negative reaction in the first blood group and in the last blood group at the same time when you are, when you are using a standard serum it's not possible so that is a faulty standard serum i think i would just encourage us to revise with a table on how to know different um, blood codes so we stop for now